All right, should we do this? Today's main topic. Now I know why you're drinking. Today's main topic is that Donnie's in jail. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you, as always, by Off the Record. Don't plead guilty to minor speeding violations and certainly don't plead guilty to major moving violations. No, wherever you are in America, call Off the Record. And I don't mean literally call. I mean go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off the Record app and use code TSTPOD. Off the Record is a service that will set you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket. They'll fight that ticket on your behalf. And in the vast majority of cases, they will win getting those points off your record. Get, having points on your record can cause your insurance premiums to go up. It could potentially affect your employment. It could affect all other things in your life. You don't want it. You want every chance of not having points on your driving record. And the best chance of that is getting off the record. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TSTPOD on the Off the Record app and that'll get you 10% off all legal services booked through Off the Record and tell them your boy Matt from the Smoking Tire sent you. All right, folks, on this episode, we talk about uh, my bachelor party trip to Las Vegas in the NSX. We've had some updates about uh, my collection and our main topic today. My friend Donnie has ended up in the shit, deep in the shit, as it were. I give you my take on the Donnie situation on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast. Let's go. Welcome to the program. Hello. 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 We're drinking bourbon today because it's uh, later than normal show for us, and I've already been to the gym, so I don't need to be sober for anything nice. the rest of the day. Don't need to pack sober. Don't, <laughs> I, don't usually, true. I don't usually. Not for South Carolina, anyway. Um, special shout out to our Patreons. Thank you for keeping this this thing go. Our patrons. Whatever. That Sorry for everybody for out. being two hours late. Cause, uh, it's not your fault. No, I know. It's but air travel stick fault. around. Yeah, the flight was t- landed two hours you late. Got, you literally landed from France and came straight to fucking work. I did. I think you should get bonus points for that, late or not. And by the way, what is the point of podcasting if not to do it on our time? Oh, I agree. They're just, you know, originally people thought it'd be at three, and I couldn't oh. update it on the plane, so that's all. But it is what it is. Those seven people. Can <laughs> fucking deal with it. That's true. And actually, everyone's off work now, probably. Mm-hmm. It might be better. Maybe mm-hmm. they're drinking. If you guys are you're drinking. Right. You know what? You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome. I, now it's it's a bourbon show. I've got the Rowan's Creek going, uh, which was one of Carl's favorite uh, bourbons. I'm wearing the Carl Ruiz uh, watch today. It's a, it's a day. Oh, speaking of which. This watch is nice in, in Nice, France. Like, the color's there. It's very aquatic. I really like yeah, this thing. The Notice Pops, Canyon is yeah. great. But I have a gift for you what? from the people at Sheffield. These guys, uh, they make very affordable but nice watches, and they sponsor Spike's podcast, Whoa. and they thought that we were left out. Whoa. So they sent us a pair of their all-sport watches, Holy one for moly. me and one for you, and their early watches, I'll peel the, you got to peel the plastic off it, their earlier watches were all like quartz movements, you know, basic. Yep. Um, this is an automatic movement. I have absolutely no idea who makes it, um, but it's a pretty nice looking watch. No idea what it costs. I've done no research, but uh, I know that the people who listen to Spike's show love these fucking things. And uh, cool, looks like a good a good travel uh, travel watch, yeah. automatic movement, and uh, feels like a quality item. So I like the automatic. Shout out nice. to nice. Thanks, Sheffield. Yeah, thank you to Sheffield Watches. Check, go check them out. Mm-hmm. That's very kind of them to send us uh, send us these pieces on these cool sort of a rubber rally strap. I like. I like that. I like the the metal strap on this one because it feels fancy, but it also is a mm. lot heavier than the cloth. Oh, yeah. All my other watches have cloth straps. Right, right. Straps, no, the so. metal. The key. The key to a metal bracelet is bracelet. What you want is, as you do this, you want the weight to be uniform around the wrist. You don't want to feel flop, mm. flop, flop, flop. And so you will a little bit. Yeah. There's no way around that. But uh, some watches are like a big flop where it's like, I'm going to get tendonitis doing this. <laughs> and so the cool. bracelet should feel soft and have a good taper, which ours does. It goes Ours goes from a 20 to a 16 millimeter. Um, 
And uh, that's important. I copied Rolex with our watch, our bracelet. Yeah, why not? Why not? Because <laughs> no one else does, and that's why everyone else's bracelets suck. That's why I take off all the other bracelets except for on ours. Copy the best. Right. Um, so thank you, uh, thank you to Sheffield. That's that's very kind of you. Um, in other news, you know who sent me an email? Hmm. Doctor Peter Atia. Oh wow! Yeah, someone. He was at the track uh, with Dax Shepard doing motorcycle things, and someone came up to him and said they were talking about you on the Smoking Tire podcast. And I got an email. He's seen our videos. He did not ghost me when I when I. He apparently doesn't check his Instagram messages, so he gave me his regular email address, which is uh, not, not not sharing that. Yeah, don't do that. Um, uh, it's actually a lot of celebrities have like ridiculously guessable email addresses. <laughs> like, like they're like I got uh, an inquiry to store a car from a, a musician who's in a very big band, a fucking a big band. They play stadiums, and. His email address was literally his first name at bandname.com. <laughs> it was like, you could guess this dude's email address. Zach at Rage Against the Machine. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> that was literally it. And so, um, and so uh, but yeah, Peter Atia's uh, email address is not, not quite so guessable. But he, I said, you know, I'd love to have you do the show, talk cars, talk health, whatever. Um, and he said, I'd, he understands. He goes, I come to L.A. a couple times a year. Can we wait and do it when I'm in town? Because the vibe is better. I'm like, you get it. Yeah, sure. So, yes. So he cool. connected me to his guy. And uh, he's got a guy. Of course. And, yeah, um, he's, he's quite famous. Yeah. So he'll come do the show. That's he's rad. cool. That's yeah, rad. It was very cool. And he said he's seen our videos before. And he totally gets it and said that Dax says hi. Um, Dax was fun. That was yeah, a fun podcast. Great long guest. ago. Yeah, yeah, he was. And then all of a sudden, he started doing podcasts, and now he's a fucking worth a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to Peter Atia, and shout out to whichever one of you out there told him to hit us up because it worked. Yeah, we had like a salesperson. Mm hmm. Consigliere. I mean, just that's what you know. That's what that's what a good fan does. Mm -hmm. A good fan fucking makes the connect. You know, bad fan other end of it, sends you content that you're in. Like, have you seen this? And you're like, I'm quoted in that. <laughs> <laughs> Saw this, thought of you. Did you? Because I'm in it. <laughs> Think, thinking of you. That's something you only want to get uh, from like that's, a loved one. That's what a bad, a good fan shares the content the other way. A bad fan shares your content back to you. Um, but, uh, Zach can't talk about France. Well, I guess you can talk about France. You just can't talk about the Macan. Can't talk about Macan. Where did you so stay in France? Uh, some fancy hotel in Nice. In Nice? Yeah, right nice. around the corner from the Monaco. Nice is all right. The last time I was there was when we did drive. Oh, like 2015. Episode one. Yeah, 2014, yeah. 15. And we drove maybe? through it in the summertime, and right now it's off season, mm -hmm. so it's kind of quiet, mm -hmm. but it's still very pretty. Nice yeah. is lovely. You, just, you can pop up to Route Napoleon, which yeah. is a fun road to drive on, but man, everyone who drives there, because like there are people commuting on this road that has... A guardrail that's six inches high and made of stones, yeah, or no guardrail, and anywhere here it would be like a canyon road that would have a berm on it, sure. and people are just hustling vans and well, motorcycles. It's like, it's like everything. what we call the Palmdale 500. Yeah, yeah, up, up true. there it's like it's like the Monaco Cinquecento. That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like uh, it's like Formula One up yeah. there. Uh, I love Route Napoleon. It's great. I was on this section that was it was like. Uh, like lots of little S's and mm -hmm. then switch back and then little S's and then switch back. So it wasn't. You didn't drive the whole thing? I didn't have time. Oh. Yeah. Fucking video. And then, well, in the morning it was fun. I drove a car with Dan Neal. He was there and he was like, You have a driving buddy? I said, No. He's like, Come on. And we got. Get ready to be mind blue. We had no work done. <laughs> we got lost. Uh, we got off the route. Uh, but we could like. We could have recorded a podcast. Fun. Zach and Dan lost in it France would be a good fun. fucking show. And uh, and then after, we're, after lunch, I grabbed my own car and like went for five hours. Yeah. And that was enough time to like go up half the route and then yeah. come back down. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. So we'll talk about that. When, is there an, when's the embargo? Next week or something. Oh, I think so. There's Couple a weeks. lot of embargoes listing the same week. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah, it's that. It's that. You know, springtime releases, right? Yeah. Cars coming out for the summer, for the fall, new model year stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it'd be. Um, all right. Well, France is nice, and we'll learn about the Macan e 
uh, later. You do the turbo for the video. I drove the right? turbo. Yeah, yeah. There's but the you four did, and the turbo. Yeah, but the turbo is the video. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so if s people like next week submit your questions about Makani if you have them. I'm excited to hear about it because I have one on order, and the big question is, Makani keep my order or bail and go Ionic 5N. Yeah. Um, this is a very, like, no joke, exciting decision. Right. I talk, and I talked to Hannah. Uh, my Ionic 5N article is the front page of Road and Track right now. I wrote it for the print magazine, and then I submitted it, and Raph was like, we need to run this on web right now. And I was like, I thought it was for print. He's like, we're going to do both. I'm like, you're going to run this on web and then put it in the print magazine? Has that ever happened before where the web piece comes out and then they print it? Usually it goes the other way. And he was like, yeah, we're going to do it. So um, he said, huge, huge numbers. They're t true to roof, true as to Kippy roof. would say, uh, on roadandtrack.com right now, my Ionic 5N uh, review. And we talked about it last podcast, best electric car I've ever driven. Um, and I talked to Hannah about this. Manual seats, to her, not a deal breaker because... 25 grand is 25 grand. That. And if everything else is that cool, then that's cool. And also, the, they're manual seats, but they're heated and cooled. That's which is a actually weird combo. a rare, a rare Very thing. Very rare, yeah. Very rare thing, yeah. I like that, though. I mean, you guys change your seats a lot, I guess, if you swap the cars every, you know, if you each drive the car twice in one day, right. it goes back and forth a lot. A bunch. But I think I found if I can have if I can adjust the manual seat to where like if the notch is good for where I need it to be it's actually faster than waiting for the motor well, or waiting for memory manual seats. is better than non memory power for yeah. sure yeah but pa even, memory power is the best for our specific situation but non memory power would be heinous it would, that would be awful I just I like the speed of the manual seat if I know right. once I get used to how many notches I need on each right. thing then I'll go you know <laughs> I'm well, done. the Ford, the Ford, I didn't realize how unique it was in the space. And I don't mean it's one of one, but I mean not everything is like this. The Ford was a one tap memory, and it was on the door, so I'd open the door, yeah. hit the tap, and my seat would go before I even got in the car. I didnn't have to hold the button down while the seat. The Rav Four Hybrid, you have to hold it, and I See, think it's so stupid. That's crazy. I don't get it. That's there's one touch crazy. windows, but you have to hold the memory yeah. seat. The f that fucked Do up. Do you think you'll give up halfway? That fucked up the Bentley for Hannah because so Hannah dumb. was like, "The memory seats don't work." I'm like, "Pretty sure they do," and she, she was like, she tapped because yeah. she was so used to the Ford. I was like, "No, no." They must have a copyright on that or something, patent. I don't know. Because it just makes too much they sense. They just allocated resources. It's not the only car I've seen that like does if you that. Like, if you were going to hit a preset number four on your radio, but you had to hold it to go to preset four and watch the thing scroll the whole like way? The, like the SL's convertible top. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which is also incredibly Which is stupid. terrible. Yeah, it's So the worst. stupid. Yeah, it's super bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I talked to Hyundai. They're going to get me one within a week or two of us coming back from this next trip we'll, we'll have one for street driving okay which i've already driven it on the street i get it i just i want you to drive it i want hannah to drive it and there's people that like they're not they're in the fucking comments and the instagram whatever they're not totally like believing me when i tell them that this is like the best shit ever why would they not i don't i don't understand that i don't know because there's people that there's some people that are saying that that It'll ne it could never replace the fun of a gas car, which I can understand if, you're, if you've never tried it. I can get that. And there's other people that are saying, well, this is just a, a, half, me this is a half measure because, because we don't, I, don't, I don't fully embrace electric cars, which is also not really true. I just don't. Wait, so there are people that are bigger fans of electric cars that are suggesting you're not a big enough fan? Correct. That I'm saying that, that, that electric cars and a, oh. and a seamless, gearless, oh. powertrain is better than the fake gears. Is better than, the, the, than that. They're, the fake is them somehow dumbing it down for ogre me who, who likes it the old way. And like, I, I just, if, if, if you have an electric car in, on a racetrack, and your goal is to go as fast as possible, no matter what. Okay, fine. But most people who go to racetracks are there to have fun. They're there to engage with a machine. Lap timing is part of it, maybe. Improving their skills is part of it, probably. But if a machine allows you to engage with it more closely, isn't that better? 
Well, that's the manual versus paddle shifted argument. Yeah. So it's a similar thing. Yeah. Well, and it, it gives you the option. If you want to drive the Ionic 5N as a silent, gearless thing, that's there. It's This isn't the only way to do it, but it's for the people who want to engage with a machine mm -hmm. or at least be confused or, or lied to that they're engaging with a machine. I think there's a meaningful difference. I drove the car on the track in silent mode. It's not better. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> I, but I think it, so, is, if there's a switch that gives you the choice, yeah, yeah, then there should can, be no yeah. argument. Because some people... Yeah. Some people like us, we we got we grew up in cars that you had to shift, and we that part of the, our brain is and pleasure is embedded in us, and it won't change. Some people yeah. maybe started it on automatics and then drove an EV and went, oh, I love this seamless power. Sure. I like having one volume knob or one note or whatever, and that's I fine like, too. I like that too, in the city and in traffic. And with, and if I had an Ionic Five N, I would drive it in silent mode most of the time. But then when I went up right. to the canyon, yeah, it's super cool. I can engine brake in a more accurate way. Like, I don't think, like... If you go from, like, four to two, does it regen more aggressively? Yes. That's so cool. Yes. That's great. It does it just like a gas car That's would do great. it. It does it exactly like a gas car would do it. It is close enough that you cannot oh, tell the difference. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's fucking great. So, anyway, I'm stoked to get one on the street, and I don't know. I mean, for the amount of, for the amount of money they want for this car, which is reasonable, I'm not saying it's cheap, but we're talking about 600-horsepower car, 0 to yep. 60 in the twos, a top speed. I don't know what it is, but it's 150-plus. It's probably as quick around, uh, around Laguna as a mid-tier 911, maybe even quicker. Like, how much was the BMW? Uh, the i4 I M50? Yeah. How was, was seventy six thousand. This is a lot cheaper than that, and way better to drive. Yeah, way I think, better. I think this is the the enthusiast EV. Mm -hmm. It's the first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, if I was Porsche, I would be figuring out how to program fake gears into my EV Boxster Cayman platform like yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Like I I would look at this and go, oh shit, if we're not doing this, we're we're gonna like. We're going to be left behind, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so anyway, go go read my review at Road and & Track, and uh, we'll have a video soon. Zach didn't have time to edit it because he was off driving some other shit, but we'll uh, we'll have that one up soon, I promise, and you will see that I am not bullshitting. <laughs> you can see it in the video. And I don't know, I wasn't running like full, like I was kind of like in the video, I was trying to like oversteer the car a little bit. I wasn't trying to run the fastest lap possible, but you could still probably use the video timestamps to get a decent sense of what this thing would run on a track day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, did anyone do time lapse? No, I don't oh. think anybody did. But okay. but but um, and I and I didn't. And and there might have been a lap where I went fast without oversteering. I don't know. I don't remember. But why would you? I didn't want to. I was I having a good no, goddamn I time. I'm I know. You know. That's what but, I do. But you'll have a. You'd have a pretty good sense of what kind of lap times it would run. It's not slow. It's, de it's definitely not slow. Um, we could talk about. Well, uh, so I drove the NSX to uh, Las Vegas. Guys, got to take a quick break for freeze pipe. You know what? It, you know what it is? Freeze pipe. You put the pipe in the freezer. Right? If you've ever experienced the agony of harsh smoke, throat burning, or coughing attacks when smoking cannabis, the struggle is real, but the solution is chilly. That's right. The smoothest way to light up is with a freeze pipe. Freeze pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, and bongs that are 80% colder than using ice cubes to chill smoke. The magic is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every single piece. Pop the chamber in the freezer for one hour, and as the smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled by over 300 degrees, so every puff arrives ice cold and cough free. These things are rad. When this technology first came out, I used to use it all the time. This was before Freeze Pipe uh, was a company that could advertise like publicly because <laughs> it wasn't legal in so many places like it is now. Um, but free th this glycerin stuff, it's like those ice packs like you would use in a lunchbox or something. It's that, but inside the tube. You can take ice cold, delightful rips. It is the best. American owned and with over a hundred thousand happy customers ditch that harsh smoke forever by visiting thefreezepipe.com that's thefreezepipe.com 
and use code TIRE for 10% off your order. That's thefreezepipe.com, code TIRE for 10% off. Shop today for free shipping. Uh, oh, Nino's did you drive the NSX party? to that? I drove the NSX, oh, yeah, with Thaddeus. Bentley. No, no, I left it for Hannah. Me oh, and Thad right. drove the NSX to Vegas cool. for, for Nino's bachelor party, which was super fun. There there it is. Did, uh, you know, I really, I hadn't, I'd only driven about 900 miles in that car since I bought it, which is a travesty. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, and that's why, newsflash, I sold the Ferrari. No shit? Yeah. So much happened in four I, days. You know who I sold it to? No. To David R., who? Our podcast ad sales representative. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I decided. I said. I said if I can sell this car by making one phone call to someone I know wants it, that will be wow. Smooth. Holy so crap! So he came in today and we went out and he looked at it and we made a deal and uh, and I, I have too, there was too many cars, not enough time. The, the NSX hadn't been driven in a month. My yeah. Porsche has been driven in a month. I've I've had adventures in the Ferrari. I went yeah. to Pebble Beach. I went to Arizona. I went to Palm Springs a couple times. I went to wine country. Did about I did about five thousand miles in the Ferrari in two years, and and you know and and these other cars need to be dri- need driving. I'm, my journey with the NSX is a new one. Porsche's not going anywhere. Right. And uh, the Lambo. Well, we'll get to the fucking Lambo in a minute in our main topic today. Yeah. But, the NSX um, is such a good car for dude, long distance driving. Dude, it was so isn't great. It? It was Oof. so great. We had such a nice drive out there. Uh, the ride is really good. It's uh, it's reasonably quiet. It has an exhaust on it, but otherwise it's reasonably uh, quiet. You know, the music, uh, I got my phone connected to the thing, and, um, it, and uh, 24 miles per gallon to Vegas and back. Uh, no problem. We did, you know, did 600 miles. Yeah. And uh, it's a great, great car. And the street presence is amazing. Someone put up. People fucking they love lo- it. People lose their mind on the highway for that car. There's one on, like, I think Bring a Trailer right now that has, like, 230,000 miles mm-hmm. on it. And mm-hmm. I was looking at it, and I don't want to copy trade you, but they're so good at, as they're so comfortable. They're yeah. such good GT cars. Yeah, they're you fun understand enough. why they could, I, why I was like, people could do tempting. that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, you know, you can, it fits a lot in the trunk, but then if you want to take the top off also, the top goes under the engine glass. So you don't need to have an empty trunk to take the roof off. You mm-hmm. could do full trunk and top down if you want. Um, but it was so nice. And I, and, and I, I had, I had thought about selling the Ferrari before then, but, but uh, after this trip, I was like, I think, I think it's time. I think with the Porsche and the NSX, I think yeah. I need to start putting more miles on those and doing more things in those. There's only so much time. And, and when you have press cars all press the time. Press cars. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, you got, you got too much shit, too many cars, and, and it starts to become work. Mm-hmm. You know, and you I don't you never want your hobby to become work. Right. Too late for fucking that. But you never yeah. want you never want, you know, a, you know, it to be work to 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 to, to do a thing that you supposedly are doing for passion. I, yeah, I don't think you want to ha- feel obligated to drive a car. You, mm-hmm. if, you know, you should go, okay, I want to drive that. Or, oh, maybe I'll take that one today. But you, you yeah. don't want to go, I should run an errand just to drive this thing or something. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I didn't, I, didn't make a, I didn't make a ton of money on the Ferrari. I, I, I basically, because I sold it to, a, I probably could have made more if I put it at open auction. But that involves a bunch of prep and a photo shoot and just just everybody up in your business and all this. And, uh, you know, the car's the car was sorted. The car's yeah. good. Didn't you, you just got all a bunch of new parts from... Dude, everything. Who, yeah, everything yeah. was done. Yeah. The bushings, the shocks, the brakes, the da-da-da. And so, you know, all in with the car, I would say it, it, it cost me about a dollar a mile to drive that car. I would say I, I, I sold it for about five grand less than I was t- all in. And I mean in insurance and everything. And parts and labor and all that everything. stuff? Everything. Parts, labor, insurance, everything. Wow. It, I probably, I was probably a minus five grand. And that's, you know, that's to put 5,000 miles on a Ferrari over two years. That's not bad. That's not bad? That's like, that's how like that kind of ownership should be. You know what I mean? Like not every car is an appreciating asset. And if you can make money on a car, like great, but like odds are you're not gonna. Mm-hmm. So you got to think it about it as like, what adventures did I do? And were those adventures worth whatever my net loss is? So yeah. like a bunch of great long road trips and overall reliability and and a bunch of fun and engaging with this machine and, 
getting it sorted and, and all that. It's a story. It's content. And I didn't count the content. Maybe there's a little bit. The videos we made with it. Oh, that might. I didn't put that in the plus. That, okay. that may have, that may kick it to the plus. Maybe. It was probably close. But like, I probably should quit one job. But in absence of that, sell one car. Okay. And it was like, one phone call, come see it, go for a ride, deal made, send the wire. Yeah, it's the perfect driver. It, I mean, because you, yeah. you've done all of the things, and it's it looks really, really good, but mm-hmm. it's not perfectly mint where you worry about driving it. No, yeah. that's the best part about that car. It can be used as a car. Yeah. But, like, I'm not going to be a bitch about this car either, about the NSX. Like, it's low miles, but and it's mint, but it's PPF. Right. And, like... It's a fucking it's it's a car. I'm gonna treat it treat it like a car, and I'm not gonna be a, a fucking you know pain in the dick. I drove it back from Vegas in the rain the whole way. Wow. On Derezas. If you were on your E46, you would have shipped. I would have. It would have been <laughs> terrible. Yeah, yeah. That's that was the wrong car for me. But um, but uh, it's it's it was so nice to go to Vegas and back in that car. It's just it's a great car for that length of a drive. I really enjoyed it. Um, Nino's bachelor party, very fun. Lots of good food, cigars, bourbon, mm-hmm. and we went to watch the UFC fight. We didn't go to the fight because the tickets were like two thousand dollars. But we went to this place that was really interesting called Stadium Swim. He, I saw a photo. Yeah, and it was like outdoor stadium seating, but you're looking at the biggest screen I've seen in my life. Well, it's right? pools. Pull up, Google it. It's worth. It, you have a professional photo of it. That's like. Would probably it's called Stadium no, no. Swim. I'll describe it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably um, it's at this place Circa in Vegas, and uh, and so it's a lot. They call it pool amphitheater. What? The fuck? So that's exactly what it is. It's an amphitheater full of pools and hot tubs and tables, at this place Circa, which is in downtown Vegas. I fucking love downtown Vegas. I, I mean love, old Vegas. Yeah. Right. Okay. Not Strip Vegas. I love old Vegas. And so it's this giant two hundred foot screen. And so we go Whoa. at night to watch the fight on the 200-foot screen, which is pretty cool. Got a table, bottle service. We didn't go in the pool. We were like nighttime people. We were dressed like we were going to a club, but people were there like in bathing suits. Like, Wait, they were hanging out in the pool? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like at night. Because it was chilly at night. It was. Right? Yeah. But, but the pool was like heated, so it was all right. But it resulted in... It was a great fight. I, I'm not that into fighting, but I know a good fucking fight when I see one. I assume you saw the clip. I did see the clip, the knockout the, clip. The knockout with one second left. Oh, I there was mean, one second left? I didn't, one know, I didn't second, know that the timer was in there. Five rounds, one second on the clock, you Before fucking knocked him out face into mat. I saw the knockout. If uh, you haven't seen the clip, it, even if you don't care about fighting, it's one of the best things I've ever fucking yeah, seen. It was, yeah, body shot and then Unbelievable. knockout shot. Unbelievable. Was it going to go to decision? Rogan was like losing his goddamn mind. Was it going to go to decision against him if the clock had run out? It probably would have gone for him. Mm. And in fact, if it went for him in decision, we, we would have won money. Uh, because uh, Nino was fucking betting on all this shit. I don't know anything about sports betting. I don't bet. But it did result in the greatest receipt in club going history. And I will, it's about eight items. And I want you to see it. Just, I want you to see it and just read down, read the, read the receipt down the list. This is at, okay, I, you've gotten to the funny part. So, yeah. so right. start at the top uh, Casamigos Blanco bottle. Eight hundred dollars. Right. So that's Vegas prices. Of Insulting, but expected. Um, and then I'm going to read each individual. Sparkling water, six dollars. 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 Right. So sparkling water, yes. six dollars. All One, the Casamigos and soda that you can drink. I just like that you ordered, that everyone ordered, you know, they charge you individually for club sodas. They didn't. Those were like refills, but yes. That's I mean, weird. yeah, it's crazy. Uh, chicken fritters platter. Yes. $100. <laughs> Brisket nacho platter. $100. Yeah. So was those, was those like chicken tenders? It was a chicken tenders platter that was about 18 inches in diameter. And by the way, how, we how many people were, did you have? There was six of us. Okay. We we she was like, do you guys want food? And we're like, what do you have? She's like, you know, like like uh, sports stadium stuff, chicken fingers and nachos and whatever. We're like, okay, one nachos, one chicken fingers. That's what we said. And oh, we're you like, look at a menu. No, no. <laughs> and we're like, and we're just like, uh, that's so. We're evil. just like, are they? You know, is it like, is it big? I was like, I actually said at one point, like, do we need to order two chicken tenders? And she goes, that's pretty big and makes a makes a like this. 
like a, like, like about a, foot. a large pizza like a foot. Yeah, yeah, large pizza hands. Not large. This is about medium pizza hands. Oh, okay, depends on about where twelve we are. inch circles. She goes, that's like this. And I go, okay, so we don't. We, let's not get two. We'll get we'll get one nachos. We'll get one chicken fingers. That comes out, and I'm impressed with the size because it's about it's about twelve. Big chicken fingers, right? Like big, like pretty biggins, and a fucking a mountain of fries that's probably double this. Like a, so a, it's a big mountain of fries. So like a shoebox full of fries. Yeah, shoebox okay. size fries and uh, well made actually, honestly, and chicken fingers. And the nachos was a, was a it was big nachos and had a bunch of brisket on it. But then I got <laughs> then I got the bill, and the chicken fingers and the nachos were a hundred dollars each. Dude, how good do nachos have to be to be a hundred? They can't be good enough for me. They can't be good enough it's for a hundred dollars unless cr- they feed twenty people. When I saw it, like I wasn't mad. I actually wasn't mad. It was so. It was such a huge number that I, and I was drunk. Right. That I I thought it was hilarious. Well, I, I was like, this is going to be the greatest story ever when I talk about this receipt on the podcast. If you divide it by six people, it's like $17 for chicken tenders, which is high, but not for Vegas. Right. right? But right. when you look at $100 unit for single chicken tenders. For like, a that's chicken insane. tender platter and yeah. a nachos. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, one 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 Casamigos bottle, a whole bunch of sparkling water, chicken fingers, and nachos. Twelve hundred and forty-three dollars. <laughs> Fucking Vegas. Vegas is ridiculous. And by the way, the table costs money. Oh, the of table it did. itself was like four hundred. You know, so it was like, and the funniest shit was like not in the main fight, but like early in the fight, the fucking feed cut out for about. Two minutes. Oh, everyone lost their mind. Yeah, dude. It was literally like direct TV. Like like someone's cat sat on the remote. Like it was like that. Oh, it just changed the it just input? Like, yeah, no, it just went down. And then all of a sudden you could see someone like fucking flipping channels. And it came back. <laughs> input one. No, input I one. like, they have direct TV on a stadium? I was like, how is there no like hard feed for this? Like well, you've got thousands, of, probably 3,000 people. Well, probably people was there. a hard feed, but someone changed the channel because it's all, it's just inputs. All of That's a sudden funny. just like law and order turns on. <laughs> like, dun, that would dun, be really dun. funny. You'd be excited. <laughs> I would be hilarious. I know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> so I really wanted to tell you about the two hundred dollar nachos. <laughs> two hundred dollar chicken. Hundred dollar nachos. nachos. That's what. But here's the yeah. thing, they this? were good. They were good. Like yeah, they better be. They were. I like. I'm insulted, but also, in terms of quality of chicken fingers and nachos. They could not have been executed better. Okay. The chicken fingers were perfectly crispy. The fries were perfectly crispy. The fucking nachos had the the liquid cheese, not the cheese that like coagulates when it cools down. Like when the, you know it's served hot, but then when it cools down, it didn't get hard. It like stayed kind of scoopy. Does that mean it's? It was fake. Yeah, Definitely I was gonna say fake. then there's, it's not real cheese, but it's no, no. But yeah. again, like the Ionic Five cares? transmission. You know, like most of Vegas, if it works better yeah. than the other thing, the illusion, I don't the town is built on illusion, bro. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But I don't know. I don't want to go back to the strip anytime soon. I want to go back to old Vegas. Old Vegas is fucking what's up. It's so walkable. It's like you can and the casinos are like manageable size. It's yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. Um, <laughs> all right. Should we do this? Today's main topic. Now I know why you're drinking. Today's main topic is that Donnie's in jail. Guys, got to take one quick break for Auto Tempest. Support for the smoking tire is coming today from Auto Tempest. And when you're looking to buy a car, it is smart to cast as wide a net as possible. We have a, we live in an, 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 a time when national searching is important. That car that's perfect for you might not be around the corner, but it might not be that far either. And if you're buying a new car, you know, going a couple hundred miles to get it, not such a big deal, really. And Auto Tempest makes this easy, bringing together listings from all the types, top sites online, like cars.com, True Car, eBay Motors, Carvana, and many more, so you can get them all in one place rather than having to search a bunch of sites separately, right? 
Like I'm, I'm right now looking for our car for our next uh, uh, project car giveaway, and I was straight at Auto Tempest because I don't want to sit there looking through all these individual sites. I have a very specific criteria for what I want, but I need to find that in as many places as possible. That can be time consuming, and Auto Tempest got me three qualified candidates in literally seconds. Auto Tempest then lets you compare with results from Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist nationwide not just in your local area. I was looking nationwide. Uh, Auto Tempest now has apps for iOS and Android, so you can use the website or have Auto Tempest right there on your home screen. Auto Tempest has all the cars with one search. So head over to autotempest.com slash tire right now so they know we sent you. That's autotempest.com slash tire and start searching for your next car. There's no lists, no best ofs. Top five alleged alleged crimes by Donnie. Yes, or by or just in the car world, you could do that. Right, right. So, at least pull up the road and track story. Right. At, least, at least give me the fucking road and track story. All right. A lot of people have uh, been messaging about this. Some have been supportive, and others have not. Um. So yeah, Donnie, uh, who worked on my Italian cars, uh, and is my friend. Uh, uh, yeah, he got arrested. Got himself in a, a heap of shit uh, in Arizona, <laughs> not in California. And uh, it's not great. Uh, none of this is great. Most of it is bad. Of yeah. Um, so you know, first things first. He did not defraud me. Um, and in fact, the things that he's accused of doing had nothing to do with my relationship with him. I paid him to wrench on my cars, and we hung out socially once in a while mm -hmm. because he's hilarious. Yeah, he is. And I put him on the show and the, the podcast because he's a fucking character, mm -hmm. and he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's very good at what he does. I mean, well, at least one of the things he does, which is wrench on old Italian cars. His work is beyond reproach. He, he really transformed my 328. And probably would have with the Lambo. Um, so he got in. I didn't, you know, it's been like a week or so. And, and I didn't want to say anything right away because I didn't know where it was going to go. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if he was going to make bail. I didn't know what, what was going to happen. He has, he, they gave him a fucking bail amount that's really, really high. He's not making bail. It's 400,000 cash. He's not making bail. Whoa. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Let me just say that I don't know if he did what he's accused of. I, I literally, I, and this isn't a defense. This is literally an I don't know. He may have. He may not have. There's a gray area. I hope the criminal justice system sorts it out right. accurately. And they probably will. They like probably that's their job. Will. So yeah, they probably yeah, will. Yeah, we are not lawyers, and this will get sorted. They're not in a podcast right. studio. Which, yeah, that's right. Fine. But because I'm, uh, you know, a a a, a, a well-known person that worked with him mm -hmm. that I, I feel like I have to say something, right? My thoughts on this. So um, he basically, he's accused of like fraud and theft and, and a lot of stuff that is like felonies. That's so like really bad. It's bad. But it's not, the actual actions that he's accused of taking um, don't, it, I don't, I mean, yes, you say someone has stolen things and defrauded people, like, that sounds really bad. But the actual things he did may not have been that bad. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the best way is to say this, because, like, basically what's, he, he's accused of fraudulently putting mechanics liens on some cars in order to take, it, take possession of those cars. He is then accused of selling those cars in another state to someone else. Now, if you're a mechanic and you take possession of cars through a mechanics lien, well, of course you're going to go try to sell them to, to make yourself your own. whole. Right. Now, if you ask Donnie, the people he put the liens on to get the cars were fucking deadbeats. And they owed him money, and they owed him this, and they owed him that, and he legally got mechanics liens on those cars and seized them and tried to sell them. If you ask them, 
he stole those cars by fraudulently obtaining mechanics liens. Hmm. If you're the state, the state says that Donnie is not a state registered mechanic. And in California, in California, and therefore cannot legally obtain a mechanics lien. And that is sort of a black and white thing. Mm -hmm. Do I personally care if he's a state registered mechanic when it comes to working on my cars? Not fucking really. It's not something that I've cared about. And as far as like, like, okay, so, so he, that's what they're saying he did. So that's, that's how you get to fraud, theft, right. and then, and then stolen goods across state lines. They're like, you can't even submit this lien form because you're not a mechanic. So, mm-hmm. so right from the beginning, before he even started, you're already doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. So he says he obtained the titles legally and that he had a right to sell the cars. So... You know, so are there two agencies or entities that are after him? One are the people that are saying, "Hey, you sold the cars out from under us when you shouldn't have," and then the state is saying you weren't a mechanic. Also, like right, so so the the people who he put liens on to get the cars mm-hmm. that they sued him to get the cars back. That was a civil suit, but then I think when he tried to sell the cars. And other agencies got involved, it then became criminal because at mm-hmm. some point those cars were considered stolen, declared stolen. Got it. At some point, like a month ago. Mm. Now, look, Donnie says one thing, and I haven't personally talked to Donnie since he's been arrested. I, I, I haven't. I've talked to his assistant, and I'll explain why in a second. But I've talked to his assistant. And, and I've not spoken to Donnie. Um, but I did know about this lawsuit beforehand. He told me about it. So, but he always maintained that he got the cars legally and that they're wrong. Maybe he's lying. Maybe he's not. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. And, mm-hmm. it, and, I, and while I was an open ear for him to talk about it and vent about whatever... I, I, I only ever heard his side. I don't I don't know. And so but at some point it became it went from civil to criminal mm-hmm. when he tried to sell the cars to somebody else. So he's in trouble. He's locked up for 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 this. So like, is it bad? Like, yeah, it's bad. And especially because he has priors. Did I, I knew he had priors when I worked with him. If I wasn't friends or never worked with somebody who has priors, I would have half the number of friends I have. The fact is, a lot of people that I know are good people and have been in trouble for things before. I could easily have priors, mm-hmm. easily, for things that I straight up got away with and was inches for getting from getting caught for. And would that make me a different person? Like, no, I think I'm a good person still. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, and it did it have anything to do with him wrenching on my car for a reasonable amount of money? No. Now, is Donnie a piece of shit? Maybe. I don't know. He never treated me badly. But does that mean that he didn't necessarily use me as bait for other people who he did treat badly? Possibly. Possibly. I don't know. I can say that he charged me a fair rate to do work on my car. But does that mean that someone didn't learn about him and then he overcharged them maybe? Mm. Maybe he did. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But you know that saying, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing I do know is that Donnie may have done some shady shit. May. He may have done everything that they say he did. He may not have, but he may have. But simultaneously and separately, there was a person or multiple persons actively trying to sabotage Donnie's business and relationships. And the reason I know that is because they frequently contacted me. Multiple times they submitted anonymous forms through our website. Mm Mm-hmm. Threat, either threatening or uh, or or saying uh, whatever that that Donnie was a, a a criminal or this and that, right? And then most recently, 
and I'm gonna sh I'm not gonna show this on the show, but I'm gonna show Zach so we can all be. I don't I don't. It's got the only reason I'm not gonna show is because it has my address on it. But we have what's what I call the Crayola letters, which is a letter that showed up at my office, which was a which was written. I don't know if anyone's ever seen <laughs> someone's name and address written in rage, like. Uh, Describe hand, what you're seeing. Well, the handwriting, yeah, it's like blue Sharpie. And, you know, the, the address on the outside of the envelope takes up 80% of the envelope. Right. So, And it looks like it was just written really quickly. It looks like a fucking ransom note, doesn't it? And inside the envelope is a photocopy of Donnie's rap sheet and says on it in blue Sharpie, are you his next victim? Signed, nobody. So, like... So here's the thing. There were people that were actively trying to sabotage Donnie's relationships, one of whom directly contacted me. At, mm -hmm. more, at least one. I can't prove it's more than one. So I think the question will be, and maybe it will hap happen through the case, is was the person sending that the same person that you know went after him because – like they were, were they enraged that their cars were sold? Right. And then they started using every avenue they could to try to you know, sabotage him. Uh, it's definitely possible. Yeah. I mean it's definitely possible. And so and, – and again – he could have done everything that they're saying he did. And if he and I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just saying what the way I see it. But at the same time there were people like when he was arrested in Arizona, it wasn't random, it was a sting. Every news story has described it as a sting. The person he tried to sell the cars to somehow got was either contacted by someone else or or whatever but it didn't feel like, right? And he didn't just bail and go, you know what? I'm not going to do this. He set, he called the cops and set up a fucking sting. Hmm. Like that's, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It, it, and I have no idea. And so, and I'm not, I, I'm not defending Donnie. If he, if he did what they're saying he did, yo, he made his own bet. He's going to have to lie in it, you know? And that's a shame mm -hmm. for a lot of people. I, I don't want to find out that my friend was fucking people. I don't. Of course. I like him personally. Me he's too. He's fucking fun. Yeah, he is. You know, he's a, he's a fun person and he's a good resource for me for a, a couple of highly specific things. And I enjoy spending time with him. And I don't want to find out that he was fucking people or that he fraudulently obtained anything. You know, or that he was ripping people off. The people who have approached me about having problems with him have never, like, it's always been this really threatening thing. It's always been this, like, anonymous letters, like, threatening thing, or you're going to get what's coming to you for being friends with him or for talking about him or whatever. It's like a, it's almost like, a comment section on Twitter or Instagram where the mm -hmm. the account's brand new and private, mm -hmm. but it's just in that's what in it letter is. form. It's just some, well, the the let I mean the letter was the most ridiculous one, and Donnie's assistant, and allegedly Donnie's girlfriend, and allegedly Donnie's mother got letters too. Same letters that's like weird. that. That's really weird. And um, so look, it's fucked. So where are we at now? He he didn't personally defraud me in any way. Um. He did, he did try to go into business with me a couple of times. He wanted me to go partners on cars, partners on restoring cars, and I never did it. Not because I was sketched out, but because I didn't – I don't do that. I don't, mm. don't want to be partners on a car. I don't even want to be partners in a business. I mean, it took a lot for me to give you points. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it took a long time to get there. And yeah. I trust you more than I trust basically anybody. I, but it's, we also have a business you understand. Whereas right, with right. the car thing, it was like... I don't know. You know yeah. I don't know. But, but, um, but our relationship was we hung out socially and he worked on my cars and I paid him for that. that that's really it. So where are we at now? Well, I had to go up there to the fucking desert with a flatbed and a box truck and two SUVs and four people and collect a disassembled Lamborghini Countach because I don't know how this is going to go. Well, you, you elected to do that. 
I elected. Right, yeah. yeah, no, I elected to do that. Because well, you said hat. I don't want people to well, think I, that you no, were for, you no, know, no, no, I wasn't forced, forced or told to. Or I decided yeah. to. Yeah. Because I don't know how this is going to go, but the people that I know well and trust have said the most important thing for you right now is to make sure your car and your parts stay together. You know, and it's a part. The car's a part. And Donnie, well, of course, because if if the shop gets seized for evidence, and then how is it going to be itemized by whom? Saying. Like it's going to be a big whose mess. washers are these? Yeah, bro, I'm not trying to fucking deal with that. Yeah, and talking to a federal agency later about how to sort out washers. I mean, yeah. that's and it and washers may seem like a small thing, but when they're purchased for a no, Kuntosh, they're not. They're whatever, six dollars each, I was dude. Say, and they they fit I'm your car. And there's a bunch of different <laughs> cars in the there, a bunch of different marquees. So it would be a mess. Yeah. And look, there's there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems with this. Like, there's people's cars that are in, but you know, engines are out and and cars and and. I I I I brought one of my clients at West Side up there. His engine was out. I, I I helped him collect his car too, and and we're collect between the, you know we're also where he's trying to figure out what to do, and I'm tr- I'm I'm gonna f- have to figure out what to do. Right, you got to find a person that's qualified. I have to, put I have all to the find parts someone back. who's got a who's gonna put my car back together. Yeah. Um, and and so while I wasn't defrauded by Donnie. His actions absolutely inconvenienced me, and I'm sure there's people out there that'll say that that's what I get for involving myself with him, and maybe that's true. Certainly a lesson. Um, but it's but that's just a hindsight situation, right? I mean, you know, like is gonna be like there are there are people in so many businesses that have, like you said, have some sort of problem in their past. Mm-hmm. Some of the world's favorite artists, musicians, et yeah. cetera, have a bit of a sordid past or mistakes that made them the person they are. Yeah. So I think to try to write off every person that may have done something wrong, well, of course there's, a, you know, if they've done, depends on the crime, et cetera. Sure. But to just ignore that percentage, that uh, part of the world entirely yeah. would limit, you know, our experience in the world, the art we see, and also, like, how many mechanics have had a problem? How many people in Dude, trades so have had a problem? Many, so a lot. Many, like, and that's so why many. we have a reformation system. And so many so. people who are, like, savants at one thing, the whole rest of their life is a fucking disaster. Right. Because their brain Music, works well art, with this thing. whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, and the whole rest of their life is a complete disaster. I just watched Oppenheimer on the flight. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. That guy yeah. fucked what a everybody. Yeah, what a mess, got in a lot of trouble. And, yeah. You know, but it was a genius. Yeah. yeah. And it and, and so, like, if, you're, if you have crime in your past and you did time or whatever, I'm not going to not work with you because of that. Like, I'm just, I, you know what I mean? If you're great at the thing you do and you treat me with respect, like, I, you know, I realize that I sort of have like a, I guess, a position in the community and maybe I'm obligated to, to, to shun people or some reason for some reason because of that. But I don't agree with that. Now, that's before we are where we are now. Right. I think. I don't know. I think it's just easy to look back and say, oh, how did Matt not know X, Y, and Z? Or how did anybody not know X, Y, and Z? And unless you're going to run a detailed background check on every single person who works on a car, like, uh, that's just not how the world works. Uh, yeah. And, and, to be, and like, look, I, you know, there's shit that I do for work and there's shit that I do for my personal life. And sometimes they cross over. But like, if you, if you treat me with respect and you, you're working on my car, you're doing a great job, you're charging a fair price. Okay, I didn't know. I don't. I don't know what he's doing, buying and selling cars on the side. Like right. I don't know what he's doing. Right. It has nothing to do with me. Right. You know he's doing good work. On I know your he's car. doing good work on my car. Right. That's what I know. And so my uh, penance or whatever for knowing him is that I had to spend a whole bunch of stress. A whole, I mean, a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, it was a bad week. For it was you. a really bad week. Yeah. A whole bunch trying to figure out how to get this fucking thing back. Shout out to Steve. The greatest flatbed driver on the planet. So he was so good. I sent him a box of steaks, even though the bill was astronomical, because nobody thought I could get the car. P- I had like ten people be like, "That's not going to work." But between Vinny and Steve, mm-hmm. no damage. Yeah. We got anything. That's amazing. Between Vinny, Steve, and about six hundred ratchet straps, we got fucking <laughs> everything. And so it cost me. I mean, no joke, thousands of dollars. Just to get the car, it costs thousands of dollars. And now I have to figure out what to do. And someone, you know, 
the person that's got to put this thing back together, they don't want to finish someone else's project. Even though, I mean, it's actually maybe, maybe it's better to start from here than to like unfuck some bad restoration yes. or something. I think yes, because it's so still in pieces. It's disassembled. Yeah. It's organized into bins. And it's the like, parts it's, you have are new. I have a so, lot of new parts. All yeah. my suspension parts are new. You know, like a lot of it, the suspension and shit was like ready to go back together. The engine hasn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have it. So I, I got to figure out what to do with the engine. I have a few options. And I mean, the good news is like it, it, it might be like a blessing in disguise because like I'm not in a hurry. I have it. It can sit. Good news. I own a collector car storage facility. Mm -hmm. It can sit. If it needs to sit, it can sit. Car's not going down in value in the in the meantime. Um, I can sit back, gather my thoughts, yeah. establish my options, and figure out. I felt better once I got it. Oh, of before course. I got it, I was not in a good place. Real, I mean, really not. In a good well, place. it's probably your most prized automobile automotive kill. Other uh, than like literal thing. buildings, it's the most expensive thing I own by like a lot. And also, I would assume your favorite because it was like yeah. a poster car. And yeah, you drove it. Like, there's a lot of history with that yeah. car. Yeah, and and it was so. a it's a part. Yeah, it's so a part that one that this one car takes up four spaces at South Bay. Dude, I've seen. I was there when the engine got taken out. It was like it's as long as the car. The engine plus transmission was like the, twelve feet long. The car. Long. The engine and transmission, the parts and all the bins, and then the body panels that have come off, like the wing, the engine cover, whatever, literally four spaces. Two, uh, two down, two up for one car. I mean, it was, it's a, it was a bitch to get that fucking thing. Yeah, it was a lot of stuff. Yeah. But and I think like so you have it, so now I hope, you know, hopefully you can breathe and you don't. I feel the urge to assemble it tomorrow. No, no, to get I don't. It done tomorrow. I don't. So. I mean, it, co it goes along with selling the Ferrari. It's like, okay, we're now, we're now, we're now down a couple. We can take our time with this one. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, let's drive these other cars. This is such like rich guy bullshit, and I'm, I'm, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe no one understands how this is going in my head. But like, like I got too much shit. Well, we. I mean, regardless of. Uh, how much the cars cost that people have. We have fans that have three, four cars. We've had Patreon members ask us, like, I have these four things. Yeah, and yeah. their cars were probably worth five to eight grand each. Yeah, yeah. And but still they couldn't drive them all. They weren't enjoying them all. It's yeah. like it's a problem with any for anyone who has more than like two vehicles, I think. Right. Regardless so, of what so they being, cost. So being being forced into the and by the way, no daily driver right now. That's gone. Hannah's driving the driving the Bentley. It's going okay. Right. But like, you know, I'm I'm now down to like Porsche, NSX, Scooter. That's where I'm kind of at right Ooh, now. How many weeks until Matt goes shopping? Oh, I'm not buying anything. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm not buying anything. Absolutely fucking not. Can't buy, don't want, don't need. I know. There's just been so many times over the years where you're like, I'm done buying stuff, no, and no. two months later... You Did you see the car I sent you for possible giveaway, though? Yeah. That's That would be epic. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. There's a car. I just I, this this is a problem when I hang out with Thaddeus. Thaddeus came to Vegas with me. Fucking five hours in the car with Thaddeus. All you can do is shop. Fucking, he's just full bro, of ideas. I was ready to blow like fifty G's. Yeah. Thad was like, "Do you see how undervalued these are?" And I'm like, "Let's go." Yeah. <laughs> fucking. I hadn't sold the Ferrari yet. The money was like already spent. I got an email to Doug Tabbitt at Switch Cars. Keep an eye out. Like Jesus. Yeah. yeah see, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You're it's like, I'm not gonna buy anything, and then we have this story well, and then, immediately. And then something that is something is very undervalued. There's a couple. There, I, Thad and I had a conversation. There's a couple of things that are very undervalued right now, and I'm not gonna fucking say what they are. Maybe we'll yeah, buy don't. one. Maybe we'll buy one. The one I sent you was looks great for a giveaway. Yeah, it look it was awesome. That's not the one I want. The one I want is similar to that, but it's a it's different in some crucial ways. I give it two months before you buy Maybe. something we'll for yourself. We'll see. Look at that. We'll see. Okay, no, no, mark the time. Buying... Audience, mark the no, time no. between when I asked no. him when what he was going to need... go shopping and when he said maybe. What that we need to two do, minutes. What we need to do is sort sort the Lamborghini first because that's – dude, that's going to be so expensive. You know, it's going to take you – it could I'm be not months until so you sort that out though. I'm not on fucking Donnie prices anymore. I'm going to have to go retail. This is fucked. It, yeah, definitely got more The expensive. whole thing is fucked. Yeah. 
Like, I didn't get defrauded, but I'm definitely inconvenienced by this. Of course. hundred percent. Yeah. Deeply. So is he. <laughs> well, not as inconvenienced as Donnie. I know. So, dude, I don't, you know, I, I hope this, I hope none of this conversation sounds, I, I hope that we've had a balanced, like, I hope that everything I've said about this is as, is as balanced like me, because I don't know. I know what he's accused of. Mm-hmm. I know what he's done and not done to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he's done the things that he, they – although if he doesn't have a license in California, that might be kind of black and white. They're saying he doesn't. It, I mean, yeah, that might reverse and the I'm, mechanics lien sale, which yeah. then makes it – it's like technically you did sell these yeah. uh, when you were not allowed to. Yeah. But I don't know. That's like – that's pretty black and white. I mean, they're saying he doesn't have a license. Uh, I haven't seen anything that disputes that. <laughs> you know, like if he doesn't have a license – that's pretty black and white. You cannot get a mechanics lien. Right. I don't think. So then you have to try to get the cars back or something like that, and that's going to be very complicated. I don't know. I don't know how that. I don't know, dude. But it's like it could have. Like my my vibe is like if he if he knowingly and this, and now, now I'm in the hypothetical. Now I'm in the I'm literally let's move into the actual and talk about the hypothetical. If he knowingly obtained got these liens without a license, a how did they go through? Because cause the titles were in his name. Uh, how did that happen? I mean, that's a bunch of people must have dropped the ball there, mm. right? So if he got these liens without a license, you know my saying, I like, I like to live by one crime at a time. <laughs> if, you, if he fraudulently obtained these liens and he sued civilly in a civil court to get the cars back, What's the worst thing that happens? He has to give the cars back, right? If he still has them. Yeah. Oh, but he does still have but them. But he yeah, had yeah, them. Right. But he had them because yeah. he tried to sell them. Right, right. Dude, if you're if you're if if you are being sued for fraudulently obtaining liens and getting those cars, and you know that you don't, and you have, know yeah. you've done that, yeah. There's your one crime. There's your Wor- out. Yeah, yeah. Worst case is you give the cars back. You're out the cars, but you never had the cars to begin with. Now you try to sell them? That's two crimes. You never, ever, ever do more than one crime at a time. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yeah. (laughs) If you're fucking speeding, don't light that blunt. You're moving units, don't speed. (laughs) One crime. Smoking a blunt, don't speed. Bro, it is so easy to get away with one crime at a time. Whoever you are. Just fucking don't do the second crime. <laughs> the I mean, first crime is easy. You can get out of that. The second crime. If he know. knew, if he knew he got those license, those titles, he should have just given up the cars when he got sued. Man, that yeah. would have ended if it. If that was the situation, then yeah. That Otherwise, would've otherwise would've it's a little it. brave. He then tries to sell the cars, and now he's got felonies on him. That's bad math. <laughs> That's really, really bad math. Like you gotta be doing this math about your life. He's certainly doing it now, sitting there mm-hmm. in fucking Maricopa County. That's fucking oh, Joe Arpaio land. That's right. Yeah. That's fucking Lunatic County over there. Hell no. Is he still sheriff there? Arpaio? I don't think so. Okay. No. I don't think he is. But like I mean, it's all bad. Look, it's all fucking bad. It's bad for Donnie. It's bad for these other fools. It's bad for me. Mm-hmm. It's bad for a bunch of people that are unrelated, that was just having a guy who's really good at working on cars work on their cars. It's bad for everybody. You know? Shitty. Super, super shitty. Now I got to pay retail. Because, I mean, he gave you a deal on the work. Because, I mean, I, you know. he might, he you know, here's... Here, I believe, and I'd tell him this to his face if he was sitting here right now, Donnie's vice is ego. He loved being in the videos. He loved being on the podcast. Well, it also helped his business. Helped his business. Helped his business. But he really liked when people would say, hey, I saw you on in their videos. He he loved that. And, you know, and that I I think, you know, I, I, I think... Again, I don't know if he did the, if if the things that they're accusing him of are true, but like in general, that that escalation is is possibly what got him in trouble here. 
Uh, I feel like they're separate. I mean, you yeah, think so? I think because if he had, if he got sued and he gave the cars back, he could still be in the videos mm. in the future. Well, like I said, you know? bad math. Right. That's, that's bad math. I'm just saying. I think they're separate systems. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate, you know. And I've and I've gotten messages from people that are that are supportive. I and part part of the reason we haven't talked about it yet is because I was like waiting for a definitive thing to happen. Like the last, we recorded the last podcast and it was like, he was about to like have a bail hearing. And so I didn't want to do a show that said one thing and then maybe he's out on bail. And, of course, and so you're right. there was that. And I was, I'm glad we didn't. And also like, um, you, it's also complicated because it's an active legal case, yeah. active situation. And we don't want to overstep and we don't want to make assumptions on things. We're not so, lawyers yeah. or cops. Right. Like, I don't exactly. know exactly how this law works. I just know what reporters have written and and what my relationship is with him. And it sucks, man. Mm -hmm. it, generally, it generally sucks for yeah. everybody. For Donnie, for Donnie's assistant, for who is possibly out of a job or, you know, has to deal with like a amount of bullshit he probably never wanted to deal with his life, you know, for for um, for other customers of his. Yeah. You know, who do who, you know, the They're, work he does on these cars is like not questioned. Like, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Great. Yeah. He's really like, attentive. He's he knows so his shit. good at dealing with these fucking cars. And like. Maybe that's at the expense of like everything else in his life. I don't know, you know. And people were saying, "Oh, didn't you see he was spending money on this and spending money on that?" It's like, yo, he lived in a hangar in Lancaster. If he's sitting out in the desert by himself three weeks a month, and then spends five days at the chateau, who am I to question that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what his fucking personal finances are. If it costs him three hundred dollars a month rent. And then he blows a fucking G note at the chateau to stay sane. Okay, the fuck do I care? Yeah, you know. And we, yeah, we don't know how much money he makes every year. Mm -mm. So like, it was like I, I remember this after watching Last Dance, because uh, I and it, I remembered in the '90s when the news was like Michael Jordan allegedly betting hundred thousand dollars on golf. Does he have a gambling problem? I remember that as a yeah. kid going, oh, wow, like this hero of mine yeah. has this like vice. And then last dance, I think he explains like, if you have a hundred million dollars, yeah, yeah. it's like betting 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, it's Someone else scale. said that too. I think it was Phil Mickelson, the golfer, mm -hmm. who was who was accused of like, oh, there's some story. Oh, he lost $25 million last year gambling. He's like, so I went from 850 million to 825. Straight faced, like, am I running out? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, the fuck, do you care? You know, now like, if he does that every year, well, you know, yeah. like then then you might have a problem. But sure, yeah, and I don't know. And and look, maybe maybe Donnie's spending was out of control, and he did need to do things to 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 cover that. I don't know. Right. I'm not fucking hanging out with the guy twenty four seven. I see him once a month. He doesn't even drink. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. Like, like, you know, what does he do? He collects books about cars. It's, so lit yeah. it's literally his going. bookshelf is amazing. Yeah, it's his book it's collection. Dense, it's ridiculous. Dude. Yeah, his bookshelf is awesome. Yeah. First time I went there, I remember I looked at the shelf and I just saw like the sea of Ferrari red books, and I was like, "Those are the books to have." Like, yeah, that's what you, that's what you want to see in this place. Books about Ferraris. Like, I, you know, I don't know, and it sucks because God, I, 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 I really. He's such a character as so many, so many like, you know, possibly troubled savant like people are, you know, like he entertains me. And that's why I put him on fucking camera because he entertains me. Mm -hmm. I w if he was just a fucking. Mm, did, guy, Carl, did Carl Ruiz have any. Never like, met Donnie. No, no. As far as he, I know. Did he have any like prison pass or anything like that? Oh, he Dude. just, he seems like he did. Not <laughs> prison, but like Carl, like Carl's restaurant in LA was like literally a money laundering, fr not in LA, in New York. Carl, when, when I went to the opening of his restaurant, he fucking put his arm around me. He goes, you know what we're doing here, cuz? I go, you're making fucking great food, Carl. He goes, we're laundering money for the mob. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's... And when I went back to go to Carl's funeral, I met the fucking mob and Carl was not lying. <laughs> Carl had scams for fucking days, dude. Remember yeah. that I told you about the Willy watch? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even going <laughs> to elaborate on that. 
Carl had it's fucking scams. It. Yeah, he had scams going, dude. He was, you know, it's, you know, deeply, deeply imperfect person. Amazing character. Yeah. You know, deeply imperfect person. I would argue Carl's and, crimes were pretty victimless, but but well, that's but. the thing. If, this, if the if the crimes are mostly victimless, and if they're in the past, we usually find them more entertaining or interesting. Sure, it's when that past is in the present, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're watching the situation unfold. Sure, that's a lot harder. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, especially if you're friends with the person. Yeah, so yeah, dude, yeah. if Carl was alive, like I don't know, I might. Carl, if Carl was like moving units over state lines or fucking laundering money for somebody and went to jail, like I'd be very, very sad mm -hmm. and and not entirely shocked. <laughs> like you know, exactly, like, yeah. You know, like I, I just, I I hope Donnie didn't do what they're saying he did. I recognize that it's absolutely possible that he did, maybe even likely. I hope the system works it out. To find an a, a result that is the truth, it's a real law and order fucking thing going on there, and and I'll I'll live with whatever it is. Like you know, I, I'm not like I hope he beats it. Like I I hope the truth is that he didn't do the things that that he said he did. Mm -hmm. And if the truth is that he did, well, that'll make me sad. You know. But like, uh, it's just all bad. It's all bad. <laughs> Yeah. There's no good in any, in any of this shit. No. You know, and I got a, I got a disassembled Kuntash. I got a fucking deal. Well, with. maybe the case will resolve itself and he'll apply for the mechanic's license and he'll, you know, he'll get on the straight and narrow and then he'll fix your it's, car. And I, that's the hero's journey at the end of the movie. It's like, hey, it's all going to work out. Yeah. Ten years from now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I told. That's what I told the people up in the desert in order to get the car out. Oh, it'll resolve itself, and then I'll bring it back. <laughs> we'll see if that's the case. Depends on how long that takes. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got a trial date for, like, August. So it's certainly nothing before then. Yeah. You know, but but based on the, the number of charges and the fact that they really, the bail was not something that he could have reasonably put up. I mean, it wasn't no bail, but it was very high. I mean, let's just say it's, it's not looking great, you know? It's not looking great. With bail, do you need for bail bond stuff? Don't you need like ten percent? This said four hundred thousand cash bond, meaning you. I don't mean. I don't know. I don't know how the bail system works entirely, but I think that means you. You can't just put up ten percent. I think it's a. Well, oh, I think that's I why know. they have bail bondsmen. Like you give the bondsman ten percent, and then I don't know. It depends. Like I think so. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Okay, but it's uh, it's all bad. It's all very very bad. Yeah. So, jail is bad. I mean that's. That's like that's pretty much like everything that I have to say about that. Are the comments just like fucking going right now? Is that what you keep looking at, or is it is the stream okay? No, I'm just looking, I'm checking on it. People are saying, <sighs> yeah, uh, it's all bad. Oh, so Dave, David says you could burn 25 million a year, and it would take 33 years to burn through 825 million dollars. Right. And yeah. That's yeah. If your interest that, oh, it's rate was Phil, zero. The Phil yeah, Nicholson. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Phil. Yeah. And that's if your interest. No, is when zero. you're that rich, dude, it's the the, the, the it's cubic. <laughs> you know, like yeah, it's, it's really hard to yeah, fuck that so up. Yeah, it's so fucking hard. It's so fucking hard. I think business investments is how you could fuck what did, it up. Oh, dude, you know what we did in Vegas? So we went to, you know, Nino's dad is like a restaurateur and he's in construction. He's in all this shit. So we go to the Fountain Blue, which is the new hotel in Vegas. It's, it's gorgeous, but it's like not near anything. It was a long fucking limo ride to get there because we were going to go to this restaurant, which was Delicious. It was called Komodo, and it was like a Nobu ripoff, but it actually did Nobu a little better than Nobu, I think. It was very, very good. It's in the Fountain Blue. But we go there. It's a Friday night. Place is, like, empty. We're like, how is this possible? And we were there because this liquor company, who I'm blanking on, was trying to court Nino's dad's business oh, okay. for his restaurants, right. some tequila company. They sent us a fucking crate of booze to the room, probably $1,000 in booze to the room. Tequila and bourbon and all this. It was great. It was lovely. Of course, I'm blanking on their name because I drank it. The irony that that was all in the suite, and then when you went to uh, the the – Whatever the Fountain place to watch Blue. the fight, it was like eight hundred dollars oh, for one yeah, bottle yeah, yeah. of alcohol. They, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. they don't let you carry in there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but uh, uh, point being, we go to this thing and and we go to dinner and they send us a the message. We'd like to invite you to the to a VIP only club on the top. 
So we're like, well, all right, they're they're buying. Fuck it. We go up there. It's gorgeous. The interior design, the materials, the light. It was incredible. It was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It must have cost a goddamn fortune to build this place. Empty. There's maybe 30 people in the whole place. Like, empty. That's not good. Not great. On a Friday <laughs> night, yeah. it's not good. And they're like, no photos, please. I'm like, oh, fucking what? <laughs> you, you know, should take photos to help promote it. Yeah, yeah. This place should be fucking wide open. So, But so one of the... The, the booze representatives, they're up there. They're buying us drinks. Great. I'm chatting with them. It's a bit pitchy, but whatever. He says to me, the owners of this hotel are losing $4 million a day. A day. Imagine what it's like. Imagine, dude, imagine. Could you even spend $4 million a day? No. Like, I, I imagine Even with you, all the cars and things I want, I'd run out of things. You'd run eventually. out, right? Yeah. Imagine you just private jetted your way across the world to different yachts. Like, you couldn't spend $4 million a day doing that. You'd have to sink $4 million yachts every day. Right. That's why people don't lose their fortunes buying shit. They lose their fortunes investing badly yeah. in businesses. Right. You know I mean, if you, I like mean? people that invested a lot in WeWork. Yeah. And then that almost got went to bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. but people that invested in FTX. Yeah. And I mean that. Like you're, if you're already up, that but, yeah. rich, like just enjoy your fucking millions and buy stuff and have fun and chill. Don't try to turn hundreds of millions into billions because you're going to end up owning a hotel that burns $4 million a day when you literally couldn't burn $4 million a day if you tried. I, I don't know. I don't know why people do that. I think they want, they want to more, fight inflation because, or because, because more. more. Yeah. Because more. It's always more. Because yeah. I, I was in Vegas the same weekend and we were at the Luxor and it was packed. As soon as Friday happened, it went from empty oh, yeah. to packed. So like no, the whole no, we strip, stayed at the Cosmo super busy. and we went to that place, the stadium. It was all packed. Right. But, but this place but, on the Friday was gorgeous and empty. Yeah. Fancy and off strip. That's tough. That's no bueno. Because you're you're asking everyone to make their entire night 100%. about that place. 100%. Because getting around that city is tough and yeah. expensive. Yeah. 100%. Uh, let's go to the Patreon for a little bit. Do you have any energy left? Or is that you done so? No, no, I'm fine. Okay, let's go to the Patreon. Of course, patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast if you want to ask us questions for the show. If you want to... Uh, you know, get an ad-free listening experience, get the show ahead of time. Uh, check out our new merch store, of course. I'm wearing the 328 shirt. You, uh, you, could, you, could, you could move my math in a little bit the other direction if you buy a Ferrari 328 shirt from uh, thesmokingtire.com, the merch store, or thesmokingtireshop.com. People have been buying a bunch of merch. We've, yeah. been, we've actually been moving units. We have new merch coming in the next two weeks. We've got the WCCS hats. And the WCCS hoodies are going to be added to the shop. So you're going to be able to buy those. I, a lot of people have e emailed me going, you're selling these shirts with pictures of your cars. What I want is the WCCS hat that you wear. That's cool. And it's un unexpected, I have to say, because like, they're not customers here. But yeah, they yeah. Still want, they no, still we're gonna add, yeah. They're going to add the WCCS shirt, the WCCS uh, hoodie, and they're going to be embroidered, not screen printed. Cool. Oh, so, sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, go to the shop, buy some merch, and let's go to it. Uh, the Kurt May says, sound like you got a couple laps on the facelift Elantra N. Um, do you have any initial thoughts? I drove the facelifted Elantra N in an autocross. So in that setting, A, I was the fastest person on our day. You know, someone beat me the next wave. You know Someone who? beat my autocross time. It was the dude from Grassroots Motorsports, JG oh, uh, pa Pasternak, pa Pastor, Pastor Jack. I don't know how to pronounce his name. JG something. JG something. JG Wentworth. Something. He beat me by a tenth. I just want to get a picture of the oh. new one. Uh, the Elantra N has a new like front end, and there's apparently some new like tuning and stuff. Honestly, without driving it back to back with the old one, it felt a lot like the old one in the setting that I drove it in. Like it was not a substantial it, difference. It didn't have substan substantial problems when I drove it. Mm -mm. I thought it drove great and did not look good. And so now yeah. it is. They better. they the Hyundai folks said that there were a lot of changes, but honestly, without the older one back to back, they were pretty subtle. Um, subtle, excuse me. And um, 
I mean, that thing is one of the best new car performance values. Great, great car. Period. Honestly, great car. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and uh, it, it's agile. It's comfortable. It's got a lot of features. It's it's usable. I, I love that car. I really do. I think it's a great car. Um, but I, I, I just couldn't tell the difference. Because because I didn't have the old one back to back, yeah. and I haven't driven the old one in over a year. Oh, it was P Cody P Cody twenty twenty three, which was September of twenty twenty two was the last time I drove it. Like too nuanced the difference. Yeah, couldn't tell. Uh, Brian Lewis says, "What state has the ugliest license plate? New Jersey." Really? What is it? Brown. Oh, that's pretty it's like, bad. It's like bra- It's not. It's not great. It's it's not it's not into the faded yellow it's, plate. Well, that's that what New, New Jersey is. It's a yeah. fade. It's a fade brown. Yeah. It's a fade brown yellow. Jersey's uh, is heinous. California black plate can't beat it. Yeah, black yellow looks yellow. good on anything. Looks, old cars or new cars looks great. Yeah, doesn't even have to match the color of the car to look great. Um, what other does there, any other state ever really? I really like the New Mexico, the yellow with the like the red font actually. It's not. It doesn't work on every car, but in general, I, I do like it. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I like if the mountain graphics on some of them are nice, like Montana or something like that. Sure. But Colorado me, green works on some of the some cars. The old school Colorado. It's very green. distinctive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, there's but nothing like a California black plate. That's the envy of the nation, right there. Because it's just simple. It looks black great. looks good on everybody. Yeah. Uh, David Bodenstein, what's your favorite Bodenstein. style of cooking? And L.A. or Vegas, who has better food? Hmm. I think L.A. has better food. I think L.A. has better food, too. Vegas has amazing food, but I think a lot of, like, the amazing, some of the amazing food in L.A. is in the real, like, authentic neighborhood. Well, and then the thing, Vegas right? took that and went, okay, let's just drop that in here. We, we discussed this on the bachelor party. What I love about food is when something is really authentic. When there's a, a little place that makes four things amazingly and sometimes they then do that and then bring one to Vegas. Mm-hmm. But in but but that doesn't normally originate in Vegas. Now Vegas, you go off the strip, the fucking Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Thai, unbelievable. It's fantastic. It's not better than LA, but it's very, very good if you go off the strip. But I think LA has more authentic stuff. More. Mm-hmm. It's got Mexican, it's got Asian, it's got American. It's got the smash burger. It's got sushi. It's got Korean barbecue. It's got all this stuff, and they've, we've invented a few things of our own here. But they're both they're both great because they're both international cities essentially because yeah. they both yeah. pull. You know, here we have a lot of international residents. Maybe yeah. Vegas too, but Vegas. I heard so many accents walking through the hotel the first oh, yeah. day. It was like walking through an inter- international airport. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, our hotel the first night was like China. We were in we were in China. It was fucking popping yeah, off. I got on the air, the elevator, and I think I heard Swedish, mm-hmm. and then a moment later I heard Dutch, which I can't yeah. understand a word of. Um, yeah, that's a crazy language. My favorite style of cooking. I mean, if, we're, if I'm actually cooking it, mm. favorite style. Mm. I mean, I can make a fucking steak, bro. I got a I got seven different ways to make a great steak, so I love that. That's what I'm best at now. Is reverse smoke, sear. Smoke is a reverse that, sear. That, that I mean, with the temperature thing. That's fa- that's fantastic. Yeah. I love a good a reverse sear with a great steak. Love it. Um, Ali Danishvar, have we driven E60 and F10 manual M5s? Uh, I've driven the E60. I've never driven the F10. I don't think I've driven a manual F10. Uh, do they hold up to their unicorn status on paper? He says, or simply out cooled mm. by the E39. I prefer the E39. I prefer the E39 to the E60, and then I and then I think I jumped to the F10. The F10 is like the modern M5, basically. Yeah. It's twin turbo V8. It feels just kind of like the new one, and it's yeah. fast enough and big enough on all those other things. And I you like can the tune size the shit out of, of the E39 a lot. Right. I like that it's got a little bit of body roll. I really I like the look. I'm a big fan of the E39. Shout out to Nick at the Grotto, who got us both suits. Got yeah. you your wedding suit. Yeah. Got me some new suits. Daily is an E39 M5. Yep. And if you want a fucking great suit in LA, the Grotto is where it's at. They have other Custom. locations too in SoCal. Oh, do they? Yeah, they do. Okay, so also yeah. in California. Custom suits, the best. I got I just got my I just got a full three piece, full custom, made to measure. I chose everything under a G. Wow. Clutch. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's amazing how 
you can specify all these different things like thread and all this other shit Dude, and, and I got and stuff. My sport coat game this fall is going to be so tight. You're going to so be got, set for Pebble. For Pebble, I was in I was in Vegas. I found a Porsche Houndstooth the Porsche like seat inserts blazer and I sent the photo to Nick at the grotto and I was like make me this and he was like on it. So I'm going to have I got he got my measurements. I'm going to do the fucking I'm going to roll through Pebble in a Houndstooth like their interior. Sick. Sick. He said, if you can get the spec of the McLaren you're driving to Pebble, I can make a blazer to match that, too. And I was like, that seems egregious. But it does, because then you have to keep you. the McLaren. But uh, he daily is an E39 M5. I thought. It's a boss yeah. move. It's an excellent move. I love them. Shout out to the Grotto. Um, Christian says, do you still drink those feel-free uh, Kava X Kratom drink shots? I haven't in a while, but they're fighting that lawsuit, and they are still selling them. And, uh, oh, are they trying to pull them off the shelves because it's well, sort of an opiate? They're, they're drug adjacent. Yeah. I mean, and by drug adjacent, I mean you take a shot of one of those and you go, well, this is the, drugs. The, uh, what was his name? Um, Hamilton Morris mm -hmm. did a great pharmacopoeia, which I think you can watch on Oh, HBO. the pharmacopoeia. Great right, show. Yeah. About Kratom? He did one about Kratom. Yeah. And it's really fascinating. And he went to a lab in a different country where they studied, where they had, did legitimate studies with mice to see if it was addictive or not and all this other shit. And it's what really did they fascinating. determine? They said, it, they said it's not, but they said it's really strange and unique because some people respond to it like it's an, amph an, an amphetamine and some people respond like it's an opiate. See, I got both. But- I got amphetamine opiate. It was a curve. It was one than the other. Man, that I love that stuff. I knew enough to not buy a case of it. Yeah, it seems risky. I took a shot of it, and it, and for five minutes, I felt like I was on coke, and then my back pain was fucking was gone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "What is this? This is some good shit." <laughs> it felt like drogas, and so I haven't had any in a while. Um, <laughs> I had one in my fridge for like a minute, and then Timmy came over, and he was talking about something on his body hurting. Uh -huh. I forget what. I was like, I know. Have one of these. And he fucking had one. He's like, this is disgusting. And I was like, yep. And wait I was like, six minutes. I was like, wait five minutes. Yeah. And in five minutes, he goes, you got another one of those? <laughs> That's the prophecy. <laughs> You, if once you pop, you can't stop. I don't know. Maybe it's activating too much dopamine or something like no, that. No, it's it's drug adjacent yeah. for sure. It's that. It's hard because like, you know, I want plant based alternatives that are less addictive than opiates because mm. we have a huge problem here. But if this is like only two degrees off of being addictive, right. that's a problem too. Right, you know? right, right. Uh, Dave Cucci, my question got missed in the Ali video. But what's it to like daily driving a lowered car? I swear we, we talked answered, about it. We answered, but the audio was so oh, fucked. Oh, bummer. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. That was a great episode despite the fucking audio issues. Please go listen to it. Um, the, the answer is how lowered is it? If it's just a little bit lowered and it's otherwise a good riding car, it's probably not a big deal unless you live somewhere with garbage roads. Mm -hmm. If it's like slammed, it's going to be much more trouble than it's worth. My car is down an inch. I think initially it was almost two inches, and it was too hard to get into driveways right. and things. And, it, and but now, I can get in any driveway. That's fine. I think it's it, you just don't. I don't want to inconvenience myself. I don't there's no either. real. There's no point to doing it other than the way it looks when it's parked. Like to really drop it super low. Yeah. Unless it's a race car, then it's just for style. But yeah. the amount of compromise. I was going when we drove to Vegas. I was next to a like a Civic, like a DX hatch on the way that I couldn't believe wasn't just grinding on the highway the entire way. Like, I was behind it. You ever and seen one of them cars just maybe, bouncy? It was super bouncy. bouncy. It yeah, was, like, yeah. maybe two inches of clearance between it and the tarmac. And I'm talking, like, the lowest part in the center of the car. Very bold. But that is inconvenient. You know, you're going to get stuck uh, on, like, a My snail. NSX has dropped half an inch. And even with me and Thad, we're both of the big boys. I'm 265. He's probably a little more than me. He's probably 275. And with our luggage... No rub, no rub, See, no good. no rub, no problem, and it was all right. It mm -hmm. was it was good. Yeah, I was actually a little concerned. <laughs> yeah, I was actually like, mm -hmm. how stiff for these springs? I was like, is this going to be a little too much? But it was not. Um, Tim A says the Ionic Five N simulated gears seem like a game changer. Did anyone at Hyundai <laughs> explain why the simulated red line is seven k and not something crazy like ten k? That's a funny question and something that me and Kamisa talked about. We were like, why isn't it like 12K? And there's a reason. First off, it's not seven, it's eight. Um, but that notwithstanding, it's because they 
they actually matched it to the sound of an of a Elantra N. And so they made the red line a little higher than you could actually go in an Elantra N, but they don't have an engine that revs to 12. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't have like an accurate comparison. They they wanted to make it something that was a little more familiar to people. Right, to the family of Hyundai also. Right, yeah. right, right. And so, you know, again, over time, downloadable sound and torque packs, I mean, fucking the sky is the limit. Yeah. Right? The sky is the limit. So download Senna's McLaren MP44, you know, with a 14,000 RPM red line. It's like back in the day when you could make your own ringtones. Right. Be like you know, that. like like that that's the potential of it and and things could change. It's it's synthetic, so like whatever, you know, but but for the first one for this thing, they wanted to make it pretty close to an existing car. And that's that's why they did that. Uh, Cover that. Yo, also, Tim A., shout out. Uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times. I didn't mention it in my article, but in, our, in 2019 when Alex Roy wrote about, uh, did a hypothetical review of a future 911 electric oh, yeah. that had downloadable, uh, which is absolutely what Porsche should be doing. With the Cayman and Boxster electric, there should be a de a, a pack built in for Porsche historic cars. There, just, we just pull them up. The Definitely. audio, the power bands, all that stuff. And they have they have their museum warehouse full of cars. They right. can record it, and then yeah, right. That's well, a that's great the, idea. I mean, the problem with Hyundai is to do this, they've got to get other people involved. Right. Porsche could do it with their own shit. Yeah, nine seventeen. And that nine, five, would nine. that yeah. would be. I mean, that would be genius. It would be amazing. And Alex was there in 2019, and everyone should look on the drive for Alex Roy's 2036 uh, Porsche. 911e review it's a hypothetical future review of a product that doesn't exist and it and actually it's i think shockingly accurate of where we might end up it was a great great piece alex is so smart yes he and is brilliant. it was so good then and i think it's still i think it actually holds up shockingly well and if porsche does this which they should do um you know, Porsche, where they go wrong, they're too serious. You know, those guys at Hyundai, I told you this in the last podcast, they're young guys. They're mm -hmm. all there. Yeah. And they go, you know what's great about this company? We have no history. We have no heritage. Right. We could do anything. They get, they get to write the history now. Yeah. yeah. And they're all fans of the smoke tire. They are. The young, the engineers at Hyundai, they're all smoke tire. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. Tim says, have we done a top five list of homologated cars? No, write that we down. Do that. We should do that. Um, Michael Shoemaker, both of you have traveled extensively for work. What are some places you'd go back to on your own dime to explore culture and car culture? What places would you still like to go? You know, that's a good, it's a good point you bring up, Michael. Um, we go a lot of places for work, and so much of it, I think, is... Um, I mean, we're obviously working, but I also consider it scouting for vacations. And there are multiple places that I've gone to on press launches that I've then gone back to with my wife um, later. Um, yeah. And it is a great way to scout for vacations. Um, sometimes I realize just how much these car companies are spending on these hotels. You go, holy fuck, this is nuts. I yeah. can't believe this. Um so, you know, where would I like to go back? I did, we did a film for Drive in Iceland, and I'd love to go back and spend some more time there. Not not for car culture. Maybe I'd like to drive some more Arctic trucks. They're fun. But but just to enjoy, you know. I'd like to go back to Norway because I went there for Lotus, but mm. I didn't see much of it. And it has such an amazing outdoor culture and, mount, like, literal mountains to climb that uh, I would love to do that. Right. Um, you know, I love Scandinavia and, and for sure. Uh, where else would we go? You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. I need to go back there because I feel like I've experienced it. Um, not Seville, but like Spain. Like Spain is great. I I love Spain. It's such a cool place. The food is so good. The people are so nice. Roads are so good. Um, I'd like. I realize that some of the trips we do are very insulated. I mean, they're mm. they're coordinated. Um, there's a plan, and yeah, we're just insulated from it. Even when we we did drive in Morocco, like I was there, I got to Morocco. see it. 
but I didn't experience that much of it because yeah. we were just transiting in a car and transiting a car and going to hotels. Like we didn't really get to get involved with the culture at all. I would like That'd to go back good. to Morocco. Yeah, I'd like to go to like uh, to uh, Tangier. Um, Morocco would be uh, exceptional. Um, I I, uh, I haven't gone, but I really to go to Croatia and check out Ramaz yeah. and 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 vacation at the same time. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, I we I first got to go to Switzerland for work, and then I went back with with my wife. It was amazing. I, I, my first time in Italy was for work, and then I went back, and it was amazing. Um, there's been a lot of places mm-hmm. and in America too. There's been places in America that I've that that are are great. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, Toblerone Malone, great name. In your episode with Ali, you were mentioning something you found out a little off about the Tycon GT brakes, but then you got cut off. Curious what it was about the brakes that felt off. So Porsche doesn't really do regen, right? They 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 don't. I mean, there's there is regen, but only once you hit the brake pedal. So there's no, it's not one pedal drive, yeah. right? So almost everybody else has a sort of one pedal drive. And Zach can't talk about the Makani, but with Tycon, uh, all Tycons, you, when you hit the pedal initially, it's regen. And then after a certain point, it's caliper, right? So there's a transition. What As I like a, about Porsche most of the time is you can't feel that transition. Right. Most of the time. Most of the time. In other cars, such as my Mach-E or lots of Teslas or um, other cars where you can turn up the regen, when you lift off the pedal, the accelerator pedal, the regen begins. Mm -hmm. And then you hit the brakes and it adds to that. With Taycan GT, when you're going quickly, you lift off the pedal, accelerator, excuse me, lift off the accelerator pedal, and the car coasts. And then you push the brakes. Now, if you push them very gently, you can brake with the regen. If you push them super hard, you go straight to the caliper. But if you push a medium, there's a transition through the regen to the caliper that can be disconcerting. And so when you're driving at a medium high pace, Mm -hmm. on a racetrack, but not bonsai, or on a canyon, that transition from regen to caliper is not consistent. Oh, wow. And I didn't like it. And other people didn't like it. Jack from Savage Geese came up to me after our first session because it was me and him. It was, uh, um, oh, what's his fucking, I'm so sorry. I'm the guy who ran all the records. Jesus fucking Christ. Jorg? Not Jorg. Uh, oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. I oh, can't the guy remember. that drove the Nurburgring record? I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's awesome. Fuck me. Stupid bourbon. I'm blanking on it. Who drew? Uh, Lars. Yeah, Lars Kern. Lars Kern. I'm so sorry, Lars. I love you. You're amazing. You're so fun. I love Lars. I apologize for forgetting his name for 10 seconds. Um, He didn't, he disputed our claim, but... I also think he's so internal with Porsche that he's just used to it. And I also think he hits the brakes hard enough all the time because he's a racing driver yeah. that he may not notice this. I had dinner and sat next to Jack last night, and we mm. talked about this exact thing. No way. In reference to other cars where there's, like, racing drivers and record setters, and then there's test drivers. Right. Like, um, That's why we talked to Miro and Miro. So like, Yeah, totally so the, different. The, test en- the engineers or the test drivers yeah. may drive at a different, uh, a larger variety of right. speeds, and they have that ear to right. go, this feels weird. Because they're, they're focused on making the car feel good to the average consumer, mm-hmm. whereas the racing driver is just going full brake, full gas, full brake, full gas. Right. So he may have never had experienced that transition. Right. Maybe. Shout out to Jack at Savage Geese. Love him. Great. Very, very good yeah. driver. And Mark, he was there too. What's up, Mark? Oh, yeah, yeah, also Mark. But um but but um but yeah, I mean and Lars Lars and the other development drivers were like, eh, and me and Jack were like, this feels weird. Feels weird. Where Ionic 5N didn't do that. Ionic 5N, when you lift off the pedal, the especially in this in the fake gears mode, it engine brakes, and then when you hit the brake, it feels like brakes. So that was the difference with with Tycon GT, and um, yeah. 
Uh, Thomas Ev... Blah, 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 blah. Favorite non-M BMWs. 850 CSI. Should have been an M car. Wasn't. Z1. Oh, yeah. Love the Z1. Yeah. Z8. Z8. Good Lord. Yeah, absolutely Z8. Mm, um, they make so many M's. That's the problem. <laughs> three. You know what? 330, 330 ZHP. Lovely car. Um, three, uh, That's E46. an excellent E46. E46 330 ZHP. Simple engine. It's a lovely car. Yeah. Um, favorite nine. Those are my, my favorite ones. I mean, the 540, if you don't want the high-strung M5, but you want something that feels similar and is the same size and still has a V8. Yeah, yeah. S Sanjay July, think I got that right? From a pure driving experience standpoint, are 997s significantly better than their 996 counterparts? It's incremental. The, see, it's incremental. It's not about the pure driving... It's incremental. Does it feel like a much nicer car the rest of the way? Yeah. 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 So, like, what does that count for? You build a race car, build a track car, eh, it's incremental. You 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 want to drive it around all the time and use it as a car? Yeah, it feels like a much nicer car. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, there's always nuance with, like, they widen the track a little bit, they change yeah. the suspension arm, stuff like that. It helps turn in, but really it's just... Getting in a 996, when I look around, it looks so much older than a, than a 997 of almost similar year. Yeah. Holy shit. Dave K, designing my own sports car for mountain roads. Good luck. Rank these priorities. And there's a one, two, three. There's like 10. Whoa. There's like 10 of them. Input effort? Holy shit. Okay. Most important is going to... Hmm. I'm going to go steering, brake. He has one, one Most important, steering slash braking slash shifter feel. There's a lot of options important. here. Yeah. Most important, yeah, steering, braking, shifter feel. Number two, predictability of limits. Number three is going to be weight. Yeah. Number four is going to be power. Number five, I'm going to exchange. He put comfort there, but I'm going to put ride quality rather than comfort. Like, I don't know if he means comfort in terms of space or comfort in terms of ride, but I'm going to put ride quality. Number five, I'll put aesthetics. Six, horsepower. Seven, maximum grip. Eight, input effort. Nine, storage. I think that's all of them. Do you, you disagree? Nope. There you go. Uh, Pugs and Porsche says, I have a 991.2 Turbo S, which is rarely driven. Cost aside, is there any advantage to using 100 octane? Mostly concerned about preserving the engine. I don't think so. Uh, I, I, I do not think so. I mean, it might make a little bit more power if it has a tune for it. I mean, right? if you're concerned about preserving the engine, I don't think so. No. Well, is he, is he asking if using 100 octane will preserve the engine better than like 93 yeah. octane? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Um, they, someone, one of our commenters, page, another patron says 100 octane is allows the engine to run as close to what the engine was originally developed for in the manufacturer's dyno. I would dispute that claim. Yeah, I don't think they build it to 100 octane spec no, because they know that the No, I think they might have built it to 100 octane in the European RON cycle, but not in ours. In in America, assuming assuming Pugs and Porsches in America, 93 octane is the same as 98 octane in Europe. It's measured differently, but it's the same gas. And this is an anecdote, but um, on the launch I was just on, Frank, who works at Porsche, he said there was a story which I think ended up in Wall Street Journal that A.J. Bain wrote, but... Uh, some guy commuted in a 911 Turbo for a number of years, and he put like 330,000 miles on the clock. Yeah. Like super high mileage 911 Turbo. And I doubt he was putting 100 octane in it, and the engine uh, required minimal maintenance. So I don't think it would preserve it any better than— I don't, I don't think it gas. preserves it better. I think if you really want to preserve your engine, 
service it every 3,000 miles. Yeah, frequent frequent high-quality oil changes yeah. is probably better. And, you know, do what the manu- manufacturer suggests, but 50% more often than the manufacturer suggests it, if that's what you really care about. I don't think 100-octane does anything if you don't need it. Uh, all-wheel drive bias says, Ali raved about your driving prowess. Hmm, he did. And your lap times at uh, Hyundai and support that. What would be some of your top tips that help you go faster than others? Can you explain moving the apex? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't have top tips other than practice, 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 practice. That's, that, that, uh, unfortunately, that's all I've got. I'm not the fastest guy. I'm now the second fastest guy. The guy from Grassroots Motors, Motorsports beat me. Fucking nerds. Of course they do. I mean, he lives and breathes motorsports and racing. Jeff Jeff Glucker literally texted me, the guy from Grassroots Motorsport beat you. And I replied, fucking nerds. (laughs) I would feel fine. I'd be fine with that. No, that's okay. Those guys race for a living. I'm not. I I can't hate on that at all. Um, I I don't have a tip that helps you go faster. It's, it's, It's just practice. It's just that's all it is. And there's people that are a lot faster than me. I mean, they're, I'm not the fastest. There's people that are faster than me. But, like, when he said, uh, can I explain moving the apex? Basically, what that what that means is when I had Ollie in the car, there were I ran a couple of clean laps, and then I ran a couple of slidey laps. And so... When I moved the apex, I was I was lining up the car differently in order to execute some oversteer on the exit, as opposed to running the clean. Oh, so it possible. was you weren't running grip laps and hitting the like if they have cones on the apex, right? You weren't hitting doing grip laps where you were choosing a different apex point than the cone was indicating. I mean. No, not necessarily, but there were some laps where I was running a little slidey in order to have a fucking a go, you know, and get some oversteer and sort of show off um, what the car could do for Ali, where I took an earlier apex in order to flick the car and right. slide it starting from a tighter position. Yeah, the drift line is not the, drift the same line as the is grip not line. The same as the grip line. So so I think that's what Ali meant mm. when he said moving the apex. But I actually, Ali was kind of like, you know, I'm not a great passenger. And so a, a lot of people who are really good at driving are not a very good passenger. And he's a very good racing driver. And so I wasn't, I, I dialed it back about 20% for Ali in the car. Oh, your aggression? Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to make him sick or yeah. scare him or anything like that. So, like, I ran a I ran a good line and I moved the car around a little bit, but like, I dialed it back quite a bit. So, the fact that he complimented my driving <laughs> was dialed like, back. Not even all I, got. I was like, bro, I got a little more. Like, <laughs> fucking nothing go. Um. Okay, let's do like two or three more, and then we're gonna call it. Uh, and then we'll save the next questions. We got another show coming uh, next week. We'll save all the questions. Paul said, uh, saw a post on Reddit about EV brake rotors rusting at a rapid pace. Haven't heard about this happening before. Have you heard of other facing this issue? You know what? I, I, I mean, no, I've not heard that. I mean, if you, if you, if your EV is one pedal drive set up, there's a possibility that you could never use the caliper for a little while. And if that brake gets hot and gets wet, like when you wash it or you drive through the rain, it will have surface rust. Yeah. So it'll develop surface rust. And then if you use one pedal drive, it it won't, you know, a couple stops will blast that rust right, right off. When, I, when I've washed my car and then not driven it for a day, mm-hmm. especially when I live near the beach, there'll be surface rust on the yeah. calipers. Just because, uh, and I just saw this on Reddit last week, a mechanic commented that the the steel they use for rotors, it's like unprotected. So it tends to surface rust really quickly, but then it also, you know, is washed off immediately right. by your uh, your brake pad. Right, right. Uh, last one, Jim Kana. That's a funny one. J-I-M Kana is a funny name. I like that. With BMW and other marks dropping dual clutch and adopting high performance torque converter transmissions, will dual clutch cars become more collectible? Oh. It's an interesting question. Eventually. I think eventually. So some cars, like like BMW front engine rear drive or all-wheel drive, right, that's easy to use an automatic transmission like with a torque converter. But like McLaren, Ferrari, Lamborghini that are using transaxles, mm-hmm. they're having gearboxes built for them. 
that only need to go in those type of configurations. And they're choosing to stay dual clutch. So I guess the question would be, can a company or would they want to build a transaxle automatic for mm -hmm. any reason? Mm -hmm. Like, can you package it that way? I don't know. I don't think they will because those are exotic sports cars. They're not regular cars. Oh, of course. You know? Yeah. I think, it's, it's I think BMW is doing part sharing across multiple models right. and trims, and it right. saves them money. And right. now, when the automatics are so quick, they go, well, who really cares if it's a dual clutch? Right. Automatic? It doesn't make sense for BMW to make a dual clutch and an eight speed auto right. for the same. That's three, the same bell housing three size. Series. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you're only making transaxles, then yeah, go for a dual clutch, right? I think I think then this question will be mostly specific to companies like BMW, where of like twenty years from now, will the cars that have dual clutches be more valuable than when they went ZF eight speed? Right. It's I would, hard though. I would it's not respond, a vacuum. I would respond this way. I think the discrepancy between a manual and a DCT, such as in the E ninety two M three, will be less than the discrepancy between a manual and an SMG. Uh, because the DCT isn't garbage. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. And I, I think it's hard. There's too many other variables because when they've done this shift to the ZF automatic, they also changed the engines and like mm -hmm. the turbos and stuff. So it's not going to be a one to one comparison. Mm -hmm. um, just one last question. Sam H. will save the rest for the next show. If in the Ionic 5N, if you shift into, quote, fifth at low RPM, does it reduce the torque output as if you were in a high gear or low RPM? So does it lug the engine? Right. Yes. Wow. It does. Very accurate. It doesn't do it as badly as if it was a gas car. Can you so, stall it? <laughs> I didn't try. Just jump to, to seventh I don't, gear. I don't think you That'd can. That'd be so funny if they you program know the, that in. Uh, the Koenigsegg, you can stall. The Koenigsegg the with, the fake, with the fake manual, you can stall that. So the Ionic, you can't. It, it, it mimics a manual torque band. So if you shift it to where it's at like a thousand RPM, it definitely does have less torque, but it doesn't have that like shitty feeling like if you were lugging a gas uh, engine. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It remains smooth, but the, yeah, it, but it does reduce the torque. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it absolutely does. That's yeah. rad. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our show, and uh, we will save all the questions uh, for the next uh, crew show, which we're actually going to record on the porch in South Carolina. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. We're going to South Carolina. It's my wife's birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Hannah. It's our five-year wedding anniversary, and our 10-year oh, wow. being together anniversary. It's been a decade. Damn. It's crazy. So we're going to get the fuck out of here tomorrow morning, and we're going to go to South Carolina, and we're going to relax on the porch, have Cuban cigars, allegedly Cuban cigars. They're not, they might not really be Cuban cigars. We're going to drink bourbon. We're going to have Mahdi the Shaman. Our yeah. next show, you know, we're going to talk about, we can talk about iguanas. We can talk about iguana safari tours. Yeah. Multiple smoking tire fans have booked iguana safari tours in South Florida. And uh, check them out on Instagram. If you want to go hunt iguanas, I'm sorry, that's the wrong word. Uh, remove invasive species uh, with air guns <laughs> off a boat with my fucking awesome friend, Madi, uh, in, in Florida, iguana safari tours. He's going to be with us. Uh, we're gonna have Jabron with us, um, who who shoots now shoots for us at Road and Track. Um, it'll Jillian. be a, my fucking insano sister in law, Jillian. Uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a big crew down She's there the good in South Carolina. It's gonna be the porch the porch cast from uh, from the Low Country next week on the Smoking Tar. Thank you to all of you for uh, patron patroning patronizing patronizing, patronizing right. and for your questions and. Uh, you know, don't give me too much goddamn shit about Donnie, man. He's trying to do the right thing here. Mm -hmm. It is what you it is. You didn't do what he's accused of doing. So I didn't do the thing. You didn't do the thing. Didn't do the thing. Gave him money to wrench in the car. And I would say you also didn't know about the thing because there are people that have protected criminals when they knew about the thing. I didn't, didn't know about the, the fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. Guy was moving paperwork, allegedly, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll that's find out. That's our show. 